Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video! Today we're going to be learning how to make a simple bridge early in the game. As soon as you can build a carve, then you can make a cool bridge. I found this lovely spot here, and as you can see the path ends, but it needs to cross the river. And of course you can swim, but that's a pain, especially if it's near your base and you're crossing often, you may as well just build a bridge. In this video, you'll see how to build a bridge quickly and simply. And what's even better is you can make a bridge that a player can get across. As you can see, boats can also cross through it. The gap can fit a carve. This kind of bridge has the advantage of confusing the enemy AI. So when enemies are chasing you, you can run down the bridge. They'll follow you on this pier like thing. And then you just jump over here, and then they turn around and start trying to swim. So it's safe. First off, you're going to need to scope out a good spot for your bridge. It's a lot easier to do this if you have a boat. This way you can look at the ground and see if it's too deep. This is fine. You can actually make bridges in water that's deeper than what you see here. Once you've found your bridge spot, you can start by having your boat there and bringing all the wood that you need. Then place a workbench on each bank, okay? Because you can only build within a certain radius of the workbench. So find a spot that's as close to the water as possible, usually something like that. And then go to the other side and do the same thing. Here we go. Good spot. Boom. Now we have a workbench at one end and a workbench at another. And the boat can be positioned to be in between both of them. Using the boat makes it much easier to build bridges and docks. Because if you're fussing in the water, then you have this issue, right? Where the moment you start swimming, you can't use your hammer, right? Whereas if I'm standing in the water, I can use the hammer. You have to be standing on something in order to build stuff. And luckily, standing on a boat works just fine. You can stand in the middle, and then look at the ground, and then boom, look at that. I could just build here. When you're moving the boat around, it can be hard to get it to stay still once it's in the spot you want. So a great way to do that is to just jump off and this is going to anchor the boat. And as soon as your character gets far enough away from the boat, it'll lose all of its momentum and it'll just stop immediately in place. And then you can walk around on it and it's not going to move around. So it's kind of anchored in place, so to speak. And this is how you can have a little mobile building platform to make building your bridges easy. You can also do this on the raft, it's even less resources that way, but personally the raft's a bit harder to move around, so I like using the carve. And now we have everything set up. We have our two workbenches on each coast, and we have our boat in the middle. I find that it's easiest to build bridges by starting in the deepest part in the center, and then building outward, as opposed to trying to line everything up, because building in the water is a pain. We'll start building with core wood. So bring about one stack, 50 should be plenty. And we're gonna make a post in the center of where we think our bridge is gonna be. So I'm trying to connect that workbench basically to that workbench. So we're actually a little bit far, the center's probably right about there. So we're gonna build some of these four meter log poles. And we're going to try and guess the center and just put two of them on top of each other. And now, let's check and see, is this actually centered? Because this piece is really important. You just place this piece in the right place, and then everything else can be lined up to it. Once you've placed that central post in, then look at one of the horizontal pieces in the game, such as the 4 meter log beam, and see which orientation you can place things in because you have to place things in these increments, right? Like, the bridge needs to go this way. It can't go something in between these two. It has to be either that way or that way, right? So, use this and point it at the centerpiece to see where your bridge is gonna go. And then you can get a sense for if it's lined up. Because this is gonna be the central support beam. We're gonna build one thing and the rest of the bridge is just gonna be on top of this, okay? Now we've confirmed that it's all lined up, 
So we can start moving the bridge out. You have to be really gentle moving the boat because it'll move around for a while. When you're making a bridge for a river, you don't have to worry about the tides because the river has sort of different water rules. So the banks of it don't really change that much. Whereas when you're building on the ocean, the ocean can actually lift carts up and boats up and put them on your dock and do all that kind of thing, right? Especially during storms. Whereas the rivers, you don't really have to worry that much about it. So you can just make your bridge be at direct water level. That's fine. And all we need to do is we can actually get rid of this upper beam. But first, let's place this here and then get rid of that upper beam. And then look at that. We have the basics of the start of our bridge. And we're going to kind of build out from the center here. Just readjust your boat as necessary so that you can keep building. You can usually build two four meter log beams before they start to collapse. So you have to make another post. If you're lucky, the river is shallow enough that you can just look underneath and you can snap the post into place. And then you can just keep going. Once you get this close to the riverbank, you can just connect the bridge and it'll get support that way. We've finished this side, so let's finish up the other side. We're lucky here, so I don't even need the boat anymore. Sometimes this will happen where before I can place the last piece to give it structure, right? It collapses. So a great way to deal with this is to just place a temporary item and then boom, that has support. And now I can use this support to place the next piece. And now because this piece is in the ground, well, I don't need that temporary support beam anymore. Now we have our foundation. And from this point on, we can just walk across it like normal. So it becomes much easier to build the rest of the bridge. It's usually a good idea to reposition the workbenches at this point, because in the beginning you didn't know exactly where the line is, whereas now you do. So it's good to move the workbench out of the way, because you're going to have to move it a little bit later. But still keep it close by, because you need to be able to build in the center of the river. Sometimes you have to build a workbench sort of like somewhere like this, so that you can keep building. And see, you can just jump over it. Easy peasy. Now let's move the other workbench, and we'll also move some of these piles, especially since I've used up some of the wood. That should be fine. There we go. Now see how much easier it is to think now that we've cleared the path? Yeah? The next step is to add the platforms. I'm going to keep this a pretty minimal bridge, so it's going to have some delicate light trim, but nothing too crazy. I want to make a realistic video for you guys to follow. So we'll walk to the end here, place one of them here, get the other one going too, and now I'll just walk backwards and then place each of these. Boom, boom. And there we go, we are at the end of the bridge and we just keep going until it clips into the earth. You might need to build stairs, it really depends on the terrain and the water level and where you're building your bridge. And now we have our bridge and look at this. This is a functioning bridge, it works. But it doesn't feel like a bridge, you know what I mean? It doesn't have that vibe yet. And we need to make it more bridge-like, okay? And there's some really easy ways to do that. All you need to do is place some of these wood poles. So I usually start right at the bank, right? So we're gonna place a set here. And then let's try and save some wood and be minimalist, right? So every three units, we'll make another one. Aha, there, look, look, uh, we already have a friend using the bridge. Oh man, he makes that bridge look great. Look at him. Look, oh, what a christening. And there we have it. That looks like a bridge, doesn't it? You see what I mean about those posts? It really adds that like, yeah, that's a bridge. I personally like how it looks more if you use these regular wood beams. But it does take a lot more wood to trim everything this way. I mentioned earlier boat crossing, right? Because you could try and make your bridge so high 
that the boat can go under it, but you have to get all the way past the very tip of that mast. It's actually a huge pain. The bridge becomes obscenely large and tall, uh, and it's harder to support it and everything. So what I find is actually easier is to make sort of a break spot in the bridge. So ideally, the best spot would be somewhere where there isn't a post already. So like right here, actually. So we're going to get rid of our trim and look at the, the core, the guts of the beast. That's its spine, right? That has to be gone because the boat has to be able to get through. So can the structure stand up? Should be fine. Or this gap isn't wide enough, so we're going to have to make the gap even bigger. So there's only certain spots that you can make the boat gaps. And you need to ensure that you can actually get the boat through. And it doesn't always work as well as you'd hope it does. So you have to actually test it. This is why testing is important. That log seems to be a, a bit of a problem. You might want to also try and sort of make the area around it just a little bit deeper. See this shore area here? I'm trying to just make that steeper so that there's more room for the boat. But you don't need to do anything too crazy. That looks like it'll be fine. And now our bridge is boat compatible. A player can still just run and jump the gap, right? And go to the other side. To build this bridge that you see, it's around 200, 230 wood and maybe like 40 core wood. So in total, 300, less than 300 wood. If your bridge is bigger or smaller, you can adjust that number accordingly. But as long as you have around six or seven stacks of wood, you'll have enough wood to make a bridge to cross, as long as you're pretty minimal. Because this may seem like a lot of wood, but it's actually quite easy to make these really big structures that use way more wood than 300. So keep that in mind. And that's it for this video, everybody. Thanks for watching, and if you want to support my work, then consider purchasing your own Valheim server that you can play on with your friends, and they can build stuff while you're out and about, and you don't need to be playing with them for them to be on the world. And if there's a specific tutorial that you'd like me to make about something in Valheim, then comment below and let me know. I love making videos in response to what you guys say. It's always really interesting to see what people are challenged by, and I love to be able to do something to help that, okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!